What's up, anybody? If, uh, if you don't know, we are going live here. We're going to be discussing and talking about um, the new book, Church of the Wild Struggles of a Pioneer, that I'm humbly and gratefully um, and super excited that I got to be the author of it. Um, this man right here, his name is Brian Brown. He is, um, you know, he's somebody that really believed in me, and he's really been the driving force that helped this book get published, get put out there, and I'm just super excited about it. Um, right now... All right, we're going live on all three accounts. We're officially uh, streaming to about 1,100 people right now, so we're super excited. We got three people viewing us live here at the moment. Um, so, Brian, do you want to get started? Yep. All right, here we go, man. Thank you, everybody who's logged on right now that's giving the support. Um, like we said before, we are doing this book. Uh, we're promoting this book, Church in the Wild Struggles of Pioneer. Like I said, that I am so humbled, so grateful to be an author of God has blessed me in His grace. Um, and this is one of the great men that has helped me. Uh, Brian Brown here, he is the man. He's somebody that has reached out, believed in me. I came to him with the book material, and he said, let's publish this book. Let's do it for real. Let's do it big. And this is why we are here today, because of the work of God. And he's bringing two people together uh, with two different strengths um, to, to, to make this world a better place, to infiltrate his love, but it takes us working together. So I'm thankful for God. I'm thankful for this man, Brian. And we're just going to talk a little bit about the book. Currently, the book is on Kindle. It's live on Kindle. You can purchase it on Kindle. Um, you can go download it on Kindle. You can also order the paperback edition right now. Super excited about that. And uh, yeah, uh, you can visit churchinthewildusa.com and click uh, buy or check it out. Um, and we're going to be doing some interviewing with Doug Pedradoli. I'm Brian Brown with Do Life Big Network. And uh, here we go. All right, let's go. So, how you doing today? Doing all right, man. I'm excited. Um, I was. Right. Before we get into that, did you want to go back and... Who are you and what do you do? Well, I'm Doug Petrozelli and I believe that I'm just a faithful servant of God. Um, Maybe we should turn the AC on. We can do that, man. Yeah, we can do that. We could kill it. We get some better noise quality. because yeah, of the... That's a loud... All right. All right. We're good. So, who am I? What do I do? Um, I believe first and foremost that I'm a worshiper of God. I'm a worshiper of God. That is my number one thing. It starts and it ends with me being a worshiper of God. I'm not a preacher. I'm not an evangelist. Uh, I'm not a husband first. I, I, I'm a worshiper of Jesus first. Um, and then as a byproduct, when I don't need all these other things, I don't need to be defined by this platform. I don't need to hold on to this platform. What I need is a relationship with Jesus. And, you know, that first and foremost, that's who I am. Um, and that's who I want to be. No matter what happens, things get taken away. I can get everything in the world, no matter what, I want to make sure that I am first and foremost a relationship with Jesus. Uh, if I become a multimillionaire or if I become homeless and poor, um, you know, it's all going to be him. So, um, where are you from? Me? I am a South Florida native, believe that or not. Uh, yeah, I was born in South Florida. I was actually born in Broward County. And, uh, you know, lived in Palm Beach County most of my life. Um, and, you know, that, that's where I'm from. So I've lived... Uh, so you were born and raised South Florida? South Florida, baby. Palm Beach here? Palm Beach County, babe. I was born and raised Palm Beach. We're oh, man! We have two native Floridians <laughs> Man, right that's like finding a four-leaf clover, man. <laughs> <laughs> finding the pot of the gold of the, of the rainbow, man. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's interesting. And, um... That's pretty cool. So when you were a kid, what church did you go to? Oh, I remember. I, um, you know, I always grew up in church. I always, uh, I always remember being in church my whole life. Um, I had very good parents. They, uh, they definitely always were uh, wanting to teach me who Jesus was, showing me love and uh, kindness, the, you know, the grace of God. So the very first church I remember, uh, it's not around anymore, but I remember the pastor, his name was John Tardonia. And it was a small church, maybe 250 people, and it was called Pinewood Bible Chapel. As the first church, I know we went to a different church before that. That's the first church I can remember being at. Was it like Christian or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was. It was a non-denominational uh, church. So yeah, it was good, man. I, I really enjoyed. It was great foundational uh, places for my faith growing up. 
And what church do you go to now? Now I currently go to a church called Christ Fellowship, uh, which is another non-denominational church. There's a big one. Like, which one do you go to? Uh, I go to the Royal Palm Campus. Royal Palm. So, yes, it's a church that has nine different campuses and I get, uh, all over South Florida. Mm -hmm. um, I think as far north as Port St. Lucie now. Uh, it goes out west to Okeechobee. Uh, I believe they're even starting a Boca campus uh, all over South Florida. Uh, but why, I current... why did you choose um, or Christ Fellowship? How did how did you land there? Um, well, it is close to the community that I live in. Um, there was um, I had been introduced to the young adult ministry. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. So someone brought you into young adult. They brought me into the young adults. Actually, my sister Amanda. She brought me to the young adult ministry over five years ago. Um, Is that how you found Christ Fellowship through uh, being no, brought into young adult? I had been to the services before. It's a it's a huge church. I had. I mean, it's been around for thirty years. So I had been to the other campuses. I mean. Uh, if you go to church in Palm Beach County, churches are, you showed up at a Christ Fellowship at one time or another. Uh, so I had been to the main services, uh, never really had gotten involved, but I'd been to the main services. And um, actually getting to that place of involvement, though, um, was there was a young adult ministry. My sister brought me there. And there were some other things in my life at that time, which we can get into if you want. Uh, but that's a long story short. Uh, there's other issues that I had to take care of in my life, and the young adult ministry wasn't part of that at that moment. But I always remember God was speaking to my heart that you're going to overcome this battle and the struggle that you're in. And when you're done, I need you back there in my church. And were you going through a struggle when you were brought into that, when you were invited there? Yes, yes, what, I was. What, what were you going through? Yeah, yeah. At that <clears throat> point in my life, um, I was struggling with uh, drug and alcohol abuse. And how old were you? I was 22 at that point. So at that point, and, and, and I was moving in the direction of like, this is not working out for me. This is obviously not producing uh, a life worth living at all. And so I was moving in this other direction. And, uh, you know, a little bit after that, I went into a program of recovery and doing the 12 steps. And I did that. Hey, you've gone through the 12 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, through the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous, um, you know, and now today I'm almost five years sober. So praise God for that. Um, wow. Absolutely. Wow. Were you working at the time? That? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I worked. You, you were happily, you know, working, everything. You had a stable job, a good career. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I would say I was happy, but, you know, uh, I mean, I did have a really good job, though. You know, in, in my life, uh, you know, my, uh, my addiction and stuff, I, I've always been able to, um, if we just had a little moment to get into this, um, for me, I was always able to make money. I was always able, that was just something that was always been very rooted in me as a hard work ethic. And no matter what I had to do, I did whatever I had to do to, to make the money, to make the bills paid, to have a roof over my head. And that was one of the reasons why, um, you know, everything else in my life was pretty bad. I'll just give you that. Uh, but that was one of the reasons why I justified not needing help. Cause I was like, I was always able to maintain a job. And if I lost the job, it was never because of my addiction. Um, you know, in my mind, uh, but I was always able to go and present myself and get another job and work and move up in the world. And so I always thought like, that can't be me. My life's not falling apart. And to be honest, so did, you didn't necessarily always have a good job. You just always had a job and you could always make money right in another place if something fell apart due to your issues. Right. Absolutely. You could always find a job. It yes. was simple to Right, bring right. in income, right, right? But it wasn't a stable environment with the good friends, um, where right, someone right. that you stayed and you felt like you know you were a family type of thing. It was right. It right. was always you were always moving and always changing jobs. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was definitely moving around. I mean, I've had some stable jobs in my addiction. Um, you know, what was the longest you stayed at a job for? Uh, even to this day, I have not held a job for two years. I've always Whoa, moved. I've always moved. Even even though wow. now that I'm even moving in a better direction, even to this day, I've still always only had. Uh, 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 it's been less than two years. I've always even got a better job. You know what I'm saying? God has just very blessed me uh, with opportunities to move up and do something uh, even better. Because you're always open for opportunity and always looking for that next. Yes. Yes. That yes. next. You know 
income, that next surge of, of cash flow, right? That's yes, what you're yes. looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and now you're not on that path, right? Um, I mean, I don't, right now, I'm not so much on that path. Uh, I don't really seek like, oh, I need to make more money. I mean, there's sometimes where I think there's a human side of me that's like, oh, yeah, we need to make more, we need to make more, we need to make more. Um, and, and I find that my life is stressful at that point. Uh, but I find that when I just say, Lord, thank you for what you provided me with, I'm going to do the best I can at this job. And then it's just insane because then he goes and provides a great opportunity that I wasn't even thinking about or looking for. And he's like, this is even better for you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, this is like, and that's where I kind of find it is today. Um, I keep my eyes focused on Jesus mm -hmm. and I'm okay. I am okay if he doesn't bless me with anything else. Like I'm okay with that. And I just find that when I'm like that, I just start to get blessed more and more. So it's crazy because when I was before, I was trying to get and move up and this and that. I, I find myself continuously on that path. Um but not trying to get there anymore. Like I'm just trying to focus on Jesus and I find that I continue to find this place of like new promotion, new, you know, things like that. So um, it, it, it's an interesting journey. And I, and I look at that and I'm like, you know, building a career path is not bad. It's only bad when that's more important than Jesus. Um, you know, and that's, that's kind of where I am today as, as far as that goes. Um, but to get back, if we want to get back to the, uh, unless you have another question. Well, you kind of still didn't answer the question. No. What do you do? What do I do? Uh, as a person, like as a man, like what do you do? Okay. Um, well, like I said, I'm an author. I'm You're author, an author. I'm author of a book, author. man. Published book, man. Okay. I'm super excited about that. So you like that title. You're an author. I do. Okay. I'm an author, uh, a spoken word artist. Uh, you know, I'm definitely. Spoken word. Um, You're a speaker? Speaker, public speaker. You're a public speaker. Yeah, writing, okay. uh, you know, messages, delivering the truth of the gospel, but also wanting to make sure that we, we bring it down to a surface level. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, I don't believe, at least not this place in my life, that I'm really, that my job is to bring the very deep levels of theology, which is good. I think that we need people to do that. Absolutely. I need that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that. My job right now is to reach people exactly where they are. Uh, people in a hopeless situation. A person in a hopeless situation um, doesn't need a deep theology of God. They need to know that there's a God and that he loves them. And maybe they don't have it all figured out, but I think they need to know that they're loved, that they're cared for, um, and that he really, really has something better for them than whatever they're pursuing at that moment. And I believe that's where I am to be, uh, at least at this season of my life. Okay. So, that's cool. what I do, man. And what do you do for a career right now? For a career, a yes. Job. Yeah, I, I work for the South Florida Water Management District, and I absolutely love this job. But um, what, what do you do, though? Like, yeah. what, Do you have like a title? Yeah, my title. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a structural maintenance tech. Um, and, maintenance tech. Yeah. So what we do is we have structures. We have hundreds, if not thousands, of structures all over the state. And these structures need to be maintained. Um, you know, we have... Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I mean, sometimes it's as simple as painting. So like building, a handyman type of thing. A handyman. For yeah, we have the, the government. Yeah, basically, yes, <laughs> for, all, for the government, yes. Uh, you know, our structures have, you know, the generators that need to be maintenance and make sure that they're running right. Um, do you have like a tech degree or anything? Um, <laughs> I don't. I have a commercial driver's license that I, you know, need a to. CDL. CDL that's required for me to go out there and transport things or whatever. That's a qualification. Um, kind of learned on the job. But for the most part, most of it's learning on the job. And I have great guys that have, uh, you know, that I work under and work with that have taught me in many things uh, as when it comes to working on, you know, mechanical things, you know, um, stuff like that. And then, you know, also even the things that are a little bit more simpler trades, such as painting and pressure washing and stuff like that. You know, even had people, you know, help me with that as well. And you know, even help me with the minor electrical work and stuff like that. Just having great men around me on this crew and stuff like that, that I've been a part of that, you know, really helped me uh, learn more and more and become, uh, you know, better at, you know, semi-skilled trade work and stuff. So it's definitely a great appreciation and I do really appreciate and love the job. That's awesome. Awesome. So <clears throat> do you have like this grand vision, like your, what is your tenure um, vision, like, what do you want to do? 
Yeah, well, I my plan uh, and what I believe God has called me to do is to be a regular guy, regular guy, regular working class guy. And um, at the same time, like, I believe that I'm called to be the church. And I think that a lot of people think that they need a degree in theology. They need a degree in ministry. They need a... You know, they need to be working for a church so that they don't have to work at a regular job and then that can provide the time for them to do ministry. Uh, but the more and more I seek God, the more and more I realize that there's time for both. Um, not that I can do that on my own, but when I see Jesus, he makes that time. Um, and I believe that I'm supposed to work a regular job, you know, and to show this world to be a shining example, obviously only by the work of God in me, to be somebody that does both that has the regular lifestyle, that's married, has a kid, um, you know, has a full-time job and does the ministry, you know. Um, now, it may not be to the extent that a full-time pastor does, uh, but, you know, we can work with that. That pastor may have to do, you know, four messages a month. You know, maybe I'm just supposed to speak once or twice a month. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, you know, where am I supposed to serve? To be that leader in the church, and I think that that's the example that God has me to, uh, wants to be set to help people understand that it's not just for the guy on the platform. It's not just for the person that's getting paid by a check that says a church's name on it. It's anybody that calls themselves a Christian is meant to be the church, to be the church in their, you know, in their workplace, to be the church um, when they give their opinions on politics, to be the church uh, when it comes to planting a ministry, because you don't need a ministry degree and you don't need a leader telling you you're ready. You need the power of God and the work ethic to do the hard work that his grace leads you to. Um, and when we have that, I believe, and we believe in that, I believe the opportunities for us to be who God's called us to be is limitless and will blow our minds. So, so, so to get more on that 10 year plan, what I would like to see um, I say all that to see, I would like to see South Florida change. I would like to see a ministry planted in at least three cities. We have one already in West Palm Beach. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but I'm actually moving to Broward County. So anybody from Broward County, uh, get ready because I believe that God has called me to plant a ministry in Fort Lauderdale on the Las Olas Strip, wow, uh, which big. is, yeah, which is another, you know, area where it can get a little crazy and stuff but i believe that's where we got to meet people where they are mm -hmm. um so i hope that if anybody's watching or anybody that knows anybody in that area if you could pray for us if you could come alongside and uh be supportive when this does time tag fort lauderdale hey baby tag los Olas. <laughs> <laughs> so i would like to see a ministry plant um be planted down there uh, i would like to see uh, another street ministry plant be planted in miami as well um, and my hope between this is, you know, I also want to see, you know, the opportunity to speak at uh, churches, which, you know, God still, you know, most of these been around Palm Beach County um, uh, uh, a few times down in Broward um, to still speak to churches and ministries, um, you know, inspiring people mm -hmm. to, to do that. So, you know, this is a ministry that's, you know, for the inside and the outside. Um, uh, so I would like to see that, you know, and I would like to see this region change. You know, Palm Beach, Broward, and Dade, it's uh, it's very different from the rest of Florida. You go to these three counties, it's a, it's a little bit more, uh, you know, I think the more south you go, the more crazy it gets. Um, but these three counties are really on my heart. And, uh, you know, I don't think that they are just so much worse. I just think that they really need to know the love of God. And, you know, I'd like to see these change. And I think it's one of the most unlikely places in the nation for it to change. Hmm. And I would like to see it change. And I would love to see people from other parts of the nation or other parts of the world like, what happened here? I'd love to see that question happen. And it's like, I'm not going to point to me that some great leader arose. No, uh, maybe I'm an okay leader, but I just pointed to Jesus. And I hope that that'll be the answer mm -hmm. um, to realize that there's a few good men that can change the world, not because they're good, but a few good men that pointed to the good one, Jesus. Um, and I, from that, I would hope, you know, I would like to continue to occupy my street, to occupy my region and continue to be that leader. But my hope is that it would spread to everybody would see this, you know, in other cities and other areas would see, wow, like all I need is the Holy Spirit and the grace of God 
and be willing to be consistent to the hard work that he's going to bring me to. And I can change this world too. You know, I can change my area. And I believe that will spread uh, from city to city, from state to state, from nation to nation. I believe that if we realize, like, it didn't take a whole lot. It just took the grace of God and asking him for the faith and consistency to not give up. And a little bit of sacrifice. you got to sacrifice oh, your time. Absolutely, right? absolutely. Sacrifice your priorities, right? Yes. you got to move your priorities around. Yes, absolutely. I think one of the biggest issues, um, I actually preached a message on this last month, was uh, I think one of the biggest issues in church, in the church, uh, you know, when we think, what's the biggest thing attacking the church? So many people are, you know, is it is it the drugs? Is it the sexual, you know, promise you all these things like the worst things for the church? And like, I don't really think those are that big of issues in the church. I think that the church does a pretty good job at telling people like, hey, um, God has better for you than this. And this is maybe what your life should look like. And I think the church does a, a pretty good job at attacking those issues. One of the biggest issues I think in the church, one of the most dangerous things is the American dream because the American dream is full of good things. It's you want to have family, you want to have a nice house, you want to have a, a good career and all that. And, and all those are completely fine and they're not sinful. But the problem is that we try to have our dream, this American dream, and then we're like, why doesn't our call fit in? Like, I don't have time for the call that God has on my life. When in reality, it was supposed to be, Lord Jesus, I love you. This is my call. This is what I'm going to do for you in this life. And then I'm going to revolve around this dream. And if I don't get those things, everything that I wanted, then, then I'll be okay because I have my call. Because it was supposed to revolve around the call and God's dream for my life, not my dream and see if his can fit in. And that is a huge sacrifice, mm -hmm. you know. So, what are your dreams? Um, well, do you have any dreams, like personal dreams that you, you know, want to attain? Yeah, I mean, I, I know I was talking to you about this a little bit earlier. I mean, I would love <clears throat> to eventually host a radio show. I love to host a radio show um, in Fort Lauderdale, and it'd be a radio show that reached, obviously, the Broward County area, Palm Beach, and Dade. I would love to see something like that happen. Um, and from that, having such a platform like that, also hosting events and rallies throughout that region, like that's an end goal dream, to have that radio show, to have this thing where say, hey, we're going to have an event, uh, we'll rent out a city's stage, wherever it is, you know, whether it's a small town, but one of their, you know, city amphitheaters, have people show up and literally just be bringing the church to the people. Um, I believe that people will be a lot more, the lost will be a lot more comfortable coming to a city's amphitheater. You know, not to say that there's anything wrong with the church building, and that's great. That's a place for growth. That's a place for uh, in-depth learning. And I, and, I, and I believe that that does need to be there and does have its place. And and I, for one, am thankful. because a lot of people just aren't comfortable walking to a church. That's, I, I was. I yeah, wasn't yeah. comfortable walking to a church. <laughs> I was like, church? No. <laughs> yeah, I don't go there. Sorry. <laughs> so, I mean, I believe my job is, you know, people will be comfortable turning on a radio show. Right. Uh, right. And it's a radio show that I believe is going to... Well, uh, I like this, I like this uh, event thing. So, yeah. just, just uh, as a hypothetical here. So, like... If uh, someone just was listening, someone that had some money and they wanted to donate ten grand, yeah, like today, like what would you do with that? Like for Church in the Wild as as a ministry, what, how would you how would you use that money? Oh, today, yeah, I mean, I would love to, you know, obviously want to pour more money into social media outreach and mm -hmm. marketing and stuff like that. You know, um, you know, I think that it's responsible before you put on a big event that you can pack it out, mm -hmm. you know, um, I, I, you know, it's not about the numbers, but I want to, so you'd need a venue, right? And you'd need to pack the venue, right? Exactly. So I would want to do that. Pack Where would you do that? You know, any, anywhere available. I mean, right now, I think we have a pretty good following West Palm beach. We'd probably want to, you know, you know, potentially, you know, either in Broward or Palm Beach or West Palm Beach, I know that there's two public stages that are outdoor stages. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'd love to have a ministry and a service out there where it's just outside. It's a, it's a public park, basically. 
and you know just having people that are lost that may be searching because i believe there's a searching for all of us every one of us is searching for god now maybe we wouldn't feel comfortable going to a church but you know hopefully maybe there'd be people who say hey would you like to come maybe they can hustle them into it say hey can we come to this park and both of those parks actually with the public stages are right next to the uh the downtown club and bar districts there's this you know, on Clematis, they have a public stage right there. So maybe you can hustle someone and say, hey, let's go to Clematis tonight. And uh-huh. like, oh, okay. And then, hey, church, Jesus, right there. <laughs> you know, that's kind of the goal there. Nice, um, nice. And I'd love to see that, you know. I, I don't need people to come. I don't have any desire for them to change. I am hoping God will intercede and penetrate their heart, but I can't change them. Mm-hmm. Um, I can tell them the truth. I can show them the love. I can accept them for where they are. And I believe that's my job and our job as church leaders to, to speak the truth and love these people. So that's me telling them that this is the way to conduct yourself as a Christian. But I love you and accept you for who you are. Now, do you want to accept Jesus? Do you want to accept the Holy Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit's going to convict your heart. Like It's not my job to tell you you need to do this, this, and this because Lord knows I still have issues that I'm working out. Uh, that I do believe I will overcome one day. And when I overcome these in five years, there'll be some more things that he reveals to my heart that I need to work on. Um, And and, and I probably... Go ahead. So many people are struggling with, you know, pain or stress. I mean, this this life is really, really complicated and really hard to, to... just get by in life with as much distractions as we have and right. as much uh, stress as we have on our income and on our jobs and on our time because like our time has completely disappeared because of everybody's agendas and from the internet and from just technology it's really hurt people and I think um, when you provide an opportunity for um, a, a break, a, a peace, and a joy. That's pretty much all you have to do yeah. is is break them away from that um, distraction for a little bit and say, there's this over here, this peace and this joy, if you are interested. Right. And I think that's pretty much all you have to do, and you know, the Holy Spirit will take over from there. Absolutely. I absolutely believe that. I believe that if we can yeah, just create an environment where we welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit. I believe people feel that. Mm -hmm. Um, And when I come with the right heart and I'm just saying, Lord, I don't need these people to know my name, uh, which I can get caught up in. I don't need this place to be, uh, you know, fans of Mm -hmm. me. What I actually need is like, I'm doing this to experience you. And I'm coming here expecting to experience you. Um, Whenever an event goes on, whenever we do that, and I like bring that heart, I believe that's when the spirit comes and works through me and then he gets the other people get the opportunity to experience him as well. Um, anytime I come in there and I'm like, man, I got a word and man, everyone's going to love this word. Well, even if they do love the word and even if I deliver it great, what have I done if they didn't encounter God? Mm-hmm. Not very much. Maybe I entertain them. Maybe I inspired them for a few minutes, but if anything's going to be long lasting and faithful, it's got to be the presence of God. So, you know, I'm done uh, trying to perform on the platform. I'm done trying to come up with a great message. Uh, I'm here to bring the presence of God and invite him there. Uh, Because to be honest, my message and my word and my delivery doesn't have to be that good if his presence is there. I'm going to do my best. I'm going to put effort in. But I'm not going to get stressed out over it anymore. Like, I'm okay. Uh, I want the presence of God there. It was never about me. Uh, and that's, that's, that's where I'm finding myself with that. So, <clears throat> what is Church in the Wild? Church in the Wild is a concept of bringing the church to people. There's people that, like we talked about, that may never want to go to church. But they may feel more comfortable in a downtown atmosphere. They maybe feel more comfortable going to a public place. Um, I think that maybe people have this idea that there's churches that put pressure on people to have it all together. Um, anybody who's putting pressure on you to have it all together, let me tell you, they don't have it all together either. I know. I, I, I knew a guy who, like, I mean, he was kind of a mess, but, like, he, you know, he had a lot of problems. And, you know, you ask him, 
do you want to come to church or do you want to, you know, come hang out with me at this church event or whatever? And it's like, he's like, I'm not ready for it. I'm working on myself. Like, I'm going to prepare myself to go to church. It's like, but you need to go to yes, church to yes. prepare yourself. Yes. It's like, and a lot of people have this idea of, like, I'm, I'm not worth it. I'm not worthy to go to church right now. I'm too messed up. Right. I have too much crap going on in my life. Or I'm stuck dealing with drugs. Or I'm stuck dealing with this addiction. Right. Or, or whatever. And, like, they just don't feel they're worthy. And it's, like, right. they, yeah. they just need someone to tell them. Right, like, right, right. Actually, you know, you'll never be worthy. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, 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 if you just directly look at, you know, Jesus saying, come as you are. He never said, come as you should be. And I believe that we have a God that says, come exactly where you are. Dealing with homosexuality, dealing with drug addiction, dealing with pornography, whatever it is, the worst of the worst. Like, Jesus got on the cross knowing the essence of how bad humanity could be mm -hmm. and how horrific like man left to their own devices becomes and i love what it says in john three sixteen. so god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him might not perish but have eternal life and at first i was wondering about this word might we might we might and i studied that and i really analyzed it and it's the idea i believe this is truly the understanding that I've come to is like Jesus didn't get on the cross knowing that everyone was going to accept him. He didn't get on the cross knowing that somebody, he did it on the idea that we might choose him. Giving us the opportunity. Yeah, like it was just giving us the opportunity. Like yeah. he literally went on through this, through hell. On the idea that we, well, he didn't even know if anybody was going to say yes to him. 50-50. Yeah, and I'm like, that's insane. That's the love of our God. Uh, you know, while he loved us and died for us, yet while we were lost in our transgressions, and he did it on this idea that we might choose him, knowing that everybody could have said no. That was a possibility. That's how much God loves us. And I think that when we can communicate that and express that love of God to people, I believe that's what's going to change them. And I believe that we are to come as we are, and we have a God that will not leave us as we are. It may be painful, it may be difficult, um, but he loves us enough to put us through that so that we can become better. And, you know, that's something that I believe. It's, uh, I'm never going to fix myself. I need to come to Jesus. Uh, messed up, broken, uh, drug addicted, homeless, uh, you know, financially greedy person from the trap house to the penthouse. There's all types of lost people. Absolutely. And we are going to need a God because we are broken, whether we're in an ivory tower or we're under a bridge. So um, just switching gears a little yeah. bit here. You have uh, like 30K in all of your social media right now. Have you had a large following like before you started Church in the Wild or, or like... Like how did that how did that happen? Like did you have a lot of friends when you were when you were a kid or before you went to church? Like wh where did it all start? Um well <laughs> this is kind of funny cuz I was talking about the, this to somebody uh, the other day. Um it definitely wasn't like that, but I've always been I, I, you know in my life um even like not being a Christian, I was always looking for something to get a crowd's attention. I was always the guy that was trying to... The attention getter. The attention getter that wanted to be the center of attention, that wanted to come up with the next craziest thing that people would talk about and, you know... Come Disruptive. Up with, yeah, whatever it was to, to do that. Um, and I, and I, I never really knew why, but I was always just trying to come up with a bigger party to throw, uh, uh, come up with a bigger idea to do, and then post on social media so everybody would talk and think like about it. Like the ice bucket challenge or something? Uh, yeah, whatever it was. I, I would usually come up with my own things. A lot of them were not very godly things. A lot of things that I'm a little embarrassed about that, you know, I don't know if I want to necessarily put out publicly yet. Uh, but you get the idea. Yeah. Um, so you were always that guy. 
So, did you have a lot of friends on social media uh, when you first got on Facebook or when you first uh, got yeah, on I Instagram? Mean, I, I had a decent amount then. Um, like 500, 1,000? Yeah, yeah, probably around 1,000. Um, mm -hmm. But then at one point, I, I actually got off of social media. Just when I was starting to deal with uh, my recovery and, and, and dealing with my addiction, I was finding social media was just a huge temptation with the ability for people um, maybe to reach out to me from my past that it was hard to say no to um, just all types of temptations. So you had to cut yourself off? I, for, for a season I had to cut myself for off. For how many years? That was probably about two years. Wow, yeah, wow, two, that's a lot. Uh, maybe even three. Wow, um, that's crazy. So, uh, and, and to be honest, I was afraid of social media because that was a huge thing that always brought me back to a life of sin, to a life of selfishness. There was just a lot of things that it was became very difficult for me. Um, and, you know, when God was calling me back, you know, I just thought social media was something to leave in the past. That was gone. That was done. That was over. Um, but what's also is funny is, you know, I heard about people before, like when I first started this ministry, because it wasn't started off on uh you know, on social media. It was started off just reaching the street level. So it started at the street level before you did any videos for it at all? Yeah, it started off just as events. And what's crazy is when I first was going through my recovery, I heard of people that were reaching people in nightclubs and bar districts and raves and stuff like that. And I'm like, wow. Well, God bless them because that'll never be me. There's no way I'll ever be able to go there and not fall. <laughs> and then it's like insane that like... Two and a half, three years later, God's calling me to go reach people there and start a ministry right in the middle of this area of my life that can never be right. Mm -hmm. um, and then about a year into doing that ministry, then God's calling me back to social media. And I was always I'm like, I will never be able to do the right thing on social media. And then I went back on the social media. And it's just funny like God uses the things that make us fall the hardest. And he redeems them. And he has, you know, uh, blessed them beyond belief um, to, to, to try to, to you know, to, to redeem it, to show how good he is. And I believe he uses that because it was never about me. Uh, I could never go to a nightclub and bar district anywhere and not fall into my temptation. That's impossible. But the love of God can turn it around so much so that I don't even fall but now I'm preaching the truth and love of Completely Jesus. Completely distracted there. with yeah. another, another yeah, exactly. agenda within yeah. there. And Instead of getting drunk and yeah. you know, partying and Ab entertaining yourself. Absolutely. And now the same thing on social media. Now it's like God's calling me to social media and trying to reach out to people and wanting to uh, spread this place. I, I believe social media can be a dark place, mm -hmm. but it's also a platform that we can shine light and I have seen the light shine brightest in the darkness. Um, but it takes people who are brave enough, uh, and I'm not, but the faith of God has put me in that position that this is where I'm going to go. And uh, people who can shine that light, and I think that's when we see the most radical change, man. So how did it start on social media? What what what? created the movement on social media um, was it just you like did you just do a video one time and... um well i will say I, well originally it was created for promotional purposes the social media was created to promote to reach out to get other people that i didn't know directly personally to come um and then clayton jennings i started to watch his little one minute like wow. doing a one minute message basically uh just taking an idea and trying to take the one minute that you get on Instagram and make your points. Quick, short, simple, to the point. So you, uh, you picked a mentor. You found Did Clayton Jennings found you or did you find him? Did you seek him out? Yeah, we found him. Uh, you know, anybody who doesn't know Clayton Jennings is an amazing evangelist, travels all over the world, uh, has about a million followers on social media uh, between Facebook and Instagram. And yeah, he uh, just somebody that I sought out and, you know, it's amazing. I've been to some of his rallies and uh, I've actually got the great opportunity not only to meet him, which is great. Everybody at his rallies, he actually does a meet and greet. But how, how did you hear the name? Like, did it show oh, up oh, on Oh, I, I found it uh, through uh, somebody that helps me um, with Church in the Wild is Giovanni Gomez. 
Okay, so so someone referred you to Clayton, and then you went on social media to find him. Yeah, then I personally went on, and then me and Gio had both gone to um, his rallies together, and we met him, and we got to go out to dinner with him. Um, he's actually now going to be, uh, you know, officiating my wedding. Wow, that's yeah, amazing! Yeah. And you got a guy that has like a million followers is gonna. Yeah, be- yeah, it's it's incredible. That's, and then the next insane. day, we're we're doing a revival with him, and you know, so should we tell everybody to tag Clayton? Yeah, Jennings? tag Clayton Jennings. Tag Clayton Jennings. Yes, <laughs> but, uh, we we love Clayton. We support him. Um, tell him you love him. <laughs> yes, he's a good man. Um, so yeah, just kind of watching what he's done, um, as far as social media go- goes, um, he's been a huge inspiration to me. So he's like your mentor that you follow. You, yeah, you, yeah. You, you chose him and you, yes. you, there, you analyze and you see how he does things and you, you're kind of breeding your success based off of his movements. Yes, yes. He, him, uh, uh, after a couple of the guys, I mean, I'd say social media, mostly from Clayton, mm-hmm. uh, there's a couple of the guys, Carl Lentz. Uh, you can tag Carl. I really love Carl. Uh, <laughs> Carl, um, you know, I definitely say Rich Wilkerson Jr. is another guy. Sean Blakely. Uh, I don't know how many people know who Sean Blakely is, but if anybody knows him, you should look him up on social media. He is extremely underrated. I've never seen him on social media. Sean Blakely. Oh, he is. Uh, 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 he just does not get the credit that he is due. He oh, is. I love him. Man. He's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I've never seen him on social. I'll have to check him out. Yeah, yeah check him out. He, he, he's an absolutely amazing man of God. Uh, very, very, very inspirational person. The person who's actually been there personally, one-on-one for me um, at dark times in my life. And has just been there taking the time to pray and, uh, and, and be there for me. And, uh, you know, just an amazing man of God. The Holy Spirit just pours out of this guy uh, with every step that he takes. And I know it's his relationship with God. And he is not God, but he is an amazing, amazing man. Awesome. So he's like your mentor that you has helped you through your your path in Christ? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, not not on a regular basis where we have met up on, on a few occasions and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, I wouldn't... I mean, I'd love him to be my personal mentor where I met up all the time. It just hasn't worked out that way. Um, mm-hmm. I've had several mentors that have really helped me and met with me on a weekly basis. You know what I'm saying too? So mm-hmm. they're very, very great. Cool. Cool. So, um, how did like your first video start? Like what, how did you do it? Was it you or did you do it with someone or, or um, did you throw it on YouTube? Like what, yeah, the, what the, was the first the thing first that you did? The first video, uh, I remember this, it was only 15 seconds. At that point, <laughs> you only got 15 seconds on Instagram. Uh-huh. So I remember it was a little bit more difficult to get your point across in 15 seconds. Uh, they gave us a minute now, so that's a little bit more to work with. Um, but yeah, uh, I remember doing that and that was just simply holding a selfie, um, just saying, Lord, just please speak to me something that you can speak to your people. Um, and I pray that this is inspirational and that this kind of grows and it's just as simple as that. And, wow. Uh, you know, and then you just kept doing 15 second, you know, videos Yeah, just trying on to, Instagram, on Instagram and then sharing them to Facebook. And, uh, just, why did you choose Instagram? I, uh, I I don't know what it was about Instagram, but I almost believe that this is the site that is going to reach. This is the social media page that's really going to reach uh, the generation uh, of you know people right now between sixteen and thirty five. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just believe that obviously we want to reach everybody. Um, and I think that there's people that are outside, maybe younger, maybe older, that will relate to it. But I think majority. That's the demographic that just majority is going to relate to. There's going to be people that are older that relate, younger that relate. But I think for the most part, right around in that area is where that's going to relate. And I find that most of that demographic is on Instagram. Instagram. And, and then you shared it to Facebook and to stuff? To Facebook, yeah, for sure. Okay. And did you have like um, a large you know, following when you started that first video, like how many did you Oh, have? no, actually, like the first time on Instagram, I didn't even have a personal uh, Instagram account. I actually, uh, we just created a Church in the Wild um, 
Instagram account and that first video just maybe a few hundred uh, followers mm -hmm. and you know as working hard and praying and asking God what does it take to build a following and stuff for you Lord um you know we don't need a big platform to be cool but we do want to do our best to market ourselves because I believe marketing there's you know there's hard work that is required, and if I'm to think that, oh, you know, the Holy Spirit's going to do it all, well, that would be the same as me sitting here and saying, I don't have a job, but the Holy Spirit's going to send somebody, uh, you know, he's going to provide a job. Well, yes, he is going to provide a job, but not by sending somebody to the door and knocking on it. He's going to send me a job because he's given me the ability to walk to a place and apply for a job and walk to another place and apply for a job and get those jobs' phone numbers and emails and call them and email them and writing up resumes like – that's how Lord is going to provide. Um, you know, he is going to provide. There's work that I need to do, but he's provided me everything I need to make that happen. Now, mm -hmm. it's his grace that I have that ability. And like going back to that, it's the hard work his grace leads me to. And well, that's one of the quotes where it's like, without work, faith is dead. Right? Yeah, without, yeah, yeah, that? yeah, yeah, with uh, good works. Faith without works is dead. Yeah. And yeah. I, I just believe that it's not that I focus on my works, but I focus you on... You have to be moving. Right. You have to be working towards your faith. Right. Whatever it is that goal is or whatever you have faith in, that you have to be working towards it. You can't just expect it to knock on your door. Absolutely not. <laughs> I, I, I honestly believe that if every time I see Jesus with my whole heart mm -hmm. as a byproduct, as an overflow works. Jesus is the root. He's the center and source of life. And the fruit of that is the hard work, is the good deeds. It, you know what I'm saying? And to me, uh, you know, it talks in the Bible that a fruit, a tree is judged by its fruit. Mm -hmm. um, if it's not producing good fruit, well, we got to, is it being cut off at the source? Is it being watered enough? Is it, you know what I'm saying? And I believe that I look and, uh, you know, the fruit should be the byproduct, should be the example of, of, and what will be of whatever my life is. If I'm not pouring into Jesus, I'm probably not going to have very good fruit coming from my life. Am I perfect? Lord knows I'm not. But I am doing my best to seek Him and I am seeing fruit be produced. And I will never produce good fruit, real good fruit, by trying to make it good. I will be, when I try to make my relationship with God good, that will produce the good fruit, the good work, the, you know. I'm just reading here. Um, so when did you decide you needed help? Like, like, how did you, how did you like start thinking this is too much for me? Right. Like I need some help. I don't know what to do. Like I'm giving up or like how, when, how did that conversation happen? Okay. Um, well, when it did first start, I had, uh, quite a few people that were excited about helping actually at the beginning. Um, they're a bunch of great guys, and um, as time went on, um, a lot of guys got pulled in different directions, and for various reasons, they were not able to help anymore. And there was people showing up to service, uh, but there was nobody else really leading but me at, 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 for a couple months there. And that was becoming difficult uh, when I was starting to see that there were less and less people that, uh, for, for various different reasons, were no longer able to be available to, 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 help. To, to help anymore. And for that few months, it really uh, was becoming difficult. And I was praying about it. And I was just like, Lord, I don't know. Uh, you know, I can't do this forever. Like, there's no way that I can bear this burden and, and, and lead a congregation of people and, and, and plant this ministry and do, like, it's never going to be me on my own. Obviously, it's all you, but, like, I need other people. Um, so you prayed about it. I, I prayed, and I was just like, Lord, I cannot do this and uh there was somebody who god put on my heart um giovanni gomez who is uh brings so much to the table he is a pillar in the ministry absolutely um he is a good man uh and i believe he has a heart after jesus and you know he has brought a lot to the table he is great leadership there this is somebody actually um when i'm leaving um he's going to be in charge of this ministry uh, along with some other people too, but he's going to really be taking the the reins there, and he is he, he is a great man, and he has shown up and faithfully uh, been at every service uh, leading uh, ever since he uh, 
ever since uh, ever since I've asked him to come on board with us. So, so anybody watching this, tag Gio and Gio give him back. props. Tell him he's awesome. He is. He's a great man. <laughs> so, um, did he also like start helping with social media, or, or did oh, you, yeah, yeah. He, did you ask other people to help you with social media, or did you do it on your own? Or? Um, well, you know, he he started to make. We had the Church in the Wild page mm -hmm. and um from that uh geo started to make some videos too and stuff like that and we had certain days where he would post and i would post uh you know just to try to get the pressure off of one person trying to put out material and you know so it's not just like oh let me put out something it's like no when it's a little bit lessened i can be filled up and focus on my relationship with God, let the overflow and let these messages transpire out of relationship instead of trying to say, well, I need to put a new video out today. I need to make this get done. You know what I mean? And then from that, you know, it was a lot better um, trying to put material out. Um, and then we had another guy, um, Javier. Um, he is a great guy. He uh, done a lot of the camera and filming for us. Okay. And he's a great guy. Most of the time, he's behind the camera on many of the videos that we shoot, on uh, a, a little bit of the editing as well. Um, he, he, he's just, uh, you know, that's just transpiring and growing. Um, so, yeah, there have been great helps on, on that with social media and helping it grow as well. Um, even Kenny Hernandez, who uh, we just did a, I just did a video with him, and he's actually going to be a big part of taking over this ministry when I moved to, to the Broward County area. So, you know, he's also been a help at getting material and he's going to be doing more of that. And, uh, you know, we, uh, definitely, definitely a lot like it's, it's a group effort, man. And it's, it's men and women united under the, the name of Jesus. And I believe that's a force that has unlimited opportunities and unlimited force, man. So, um, is there, is it a myth about being consistent or, or like, do you have to do something every single day or do you have to post a video every single day or, or do you have to do a picture post every single day? Like, how do you do it? Do you have a schedule that you do and did you get it from somewhere? Or? Um, I, I just prayed about it. I prayed about it a lot and I, um, for sure try and I found that this is very good for, 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 you know, um, for me at least, um, trying to put out the one minute videos uh, of a message twice a week. Twice a week. Uh, I found that that was pretty good. I find that that gets, uh, uh, you know, it's it's not flooding. Um, you know, I, I want to walk the line between, the, there's, there's, a, there's a line where you can market and you can flood your, um, you know, you can flood the market with an extreme amount of material. And yes, you can get a lot of followers. Um, which is a great way to get a high quantity. Now you also could, there's also the other side, which tries to get a large quality and they try to post like once every two weeks and see who their real consistent followers are that are actually searching their page, you know, daily to see the next thing they do. Um, but I believe there's a line between the two and I find that posting it every two weeks Gets, uh, gets you to have a good idea of getting quantity and, you know, quality. And, you know, I believe that we should be doing both. You know, I don't, I don't want to be so conservative that I'm just trying to get the quality people. And I don't want to be so liberal that I'm just trying to get everybody. Like, there is both. There's a place where I am trying to outreach. And I'm also trying to be there to feed um, and spiritually lead people as well. And I found that that so far through prayer has been what I believe God's called me to be. And I found that that um, has done a very excellent job at reaching people. So is it you do two and Gio does two? Or or, yeah, yeah. or you do one and he does one a week? So is uh -oh. it two a week per person? Or two two, two a, week? a week per person. Two a week per so person. So you're doing four videos a week? Four videos, yeah, between the two people, four videos a week. And do you do pictures too, or just um, yeah, videos? yeah, yeah, yeah? No, we'll we'll do pictures as well. Um, you know, whatever it is. If there's an inspirational story that we got out of church in the wild, we'll take a picture with that person, post it on our social media, write the story underneath what happened, what they overcame, and you know, we've had people that were about to commit suicide just walking down the street, um, and they came across one of our services and changed their mind. 
Wow. You know, we've had drug So the people. videos have, have actually impacted people and, and you get stories and well, testimonies of people. Well, yeah, we get stories from people reaching out to us through watching the videos, but what I was just talking about was people like actually stumbling across our service. Oh, so the physical service. The physical service downtown. Wow. And they were down there and they were, were ready like that to be their last night. We've had multiple people. We've had wow. three people that that's happened where they were saying, I was going to kill myself tonight. Wow. And that, it was not us. It was the, we created an opportunity. We invited the presence of God. God showed up, touched their heart, and now their life's on a different direction. Um, wow. And so we'll take a picture with those people and like, this is somebody that God used us and, you know, we just want to put this out, let you know, God is moving here. Wow. This is not something that's fun. This is not something that's cool. <clears throat> yeah, it can be cool. It can be fun. But we're doing this because we love Jesus and we're also want to put out there like, God is still in control. He is that's, still moving. Like powerful. He still reigns and that's he is still powerful. reaching the darkest places. Like I'm just trying to be available, but Jesus is doing this. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, pictures like that, um, pictures of the service to show people, hey, look, we're a nightclub and bar district and we've had anywhere uh, from up to, you know, 150 people show up, right? And, you know what I mean? Having a service for Jesus, you know what I mean? Like in a place that would normally be a place where he's lacking. So, uh, you know, that's, you know, just to show that inspiration that like, we don't really have much. We don't have the backing of any, you know, we just have a group of men that love Jesus uh, and women that love Jesus that say, hey, we're going to show up and we're going to invite people and we're believing God's going to show up. And it's it's not a great thing. We don't have a huge source of income. We don't have an amazing band. You know, we do have great worship leaders that invite the presence of God. I'm not an amazing speaker, but we invite the presence of God. We have a tent with some lights and it's completely overrated, um, but it's the presence of God. If we were to just write down a list of what we have going on, it's not really that special, but the presence of God is what makes it all worth it. We don't need all that stuff. What we need is to encounter the presence of a living Holy Spirit, and that's what's powerful. That's awesome. <clears throat> so um, just like looking at an overall overview, like as a bird's eye view, what do you think the main key um, of your physical work was to the success of um, where you're at now? Um, well, I mean, first and foremost, it's definitely the relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Just being whoever he's called me to be. And I have found that, you know, the greatest things... Um, you know, it's so funny that you asked me that question because God asked me the other day, if you were to be asked, like, you know, what's the greatest accomplishment and, 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 and all that, like, what would you say, um, you know, and, and what would you attribute it to? Um, you know, I think that the greatest thing that God has ever shown me to do as far as ministry was to meet up one-on-one -on -one with people. Awesome. I would say, you know, speaking on and, and building a platform and speaking on it and, you know, having a lot of followers on social media and writing a book, those are good things and those are really great. Uh, but if I look back at my life, I've been a part of the platform that a speaker was on. And, you know, I've sat and watched great speakers and I've read pretty good books that were really great. And, you know, I've followed you know, great leaders that spoke the truth and love on social media. And, you know, maybe it was a moment of inspiration and maybe I felt a little bit of the Holy Spirit and stuff like that. Um, and those are all good things. I don't think they're bad by any means. Uh, but I've noticed that when my life changed uh, was when somebody said, hey, man, uh, why don't we and you meet up together? Why don't you come over to my house? Why don't we meet up at a coffee shop? Why don't we go through a book together? Uh, you know, why don't I... You know, didn't say this, but basically described, why don't I just spiritually father you? You know, he didn't say that. He wasn't a demeaning thing. It was just like... It's the connection. Let me, yeah, let me be your friend. Your friend, right. And I have found that that's what changed my life, wow. you know, more than anything. And this was a guy that was speaking on a platform. This is the guy that, you know, uh, very deeply inspired me. Um, his name is Mike Griffin. He's an amazing man. Um, 
my first uh, mentor in the church, and he was a guy who had a full-time job. He spoke on a platform that he really helped build up, and I just saw him completely take the time. This guy who was writing messages every week, who was working a full-time job, very successful person. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think he, I mean, I think I met him at 24 and he owned his own condo and stuff like that. I mean, very he successful. Put relationships first. Yeah, but he, he still made sure he took time to invite me over his house, to, to, to pour into me, to go through the book, to help me grow. And that has really changed my life. And today, I think that that has shown me like, that's been the, that's the real success. Like if I can be, you know, if we're just talking ministry, um, you know, being a Christian, the real success is your relationship with God and that you do everything he did for you. And if everything goes wrong and if everybody rejects you and you continue to do it, like that's the success because I did it to please God. But you're still making friends. Right, right, right. Now, 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 now when we talk about ministry, because the relationship with God and, and ministry are two different things. Mm -hmm. Now, if we're going to just talk ministry and not relationship with God, the greatest success that I've had is attributed to the ability from God to be consistent meeting up one-on-one -on -one with people. Uh, for me to pour into their lives now and then to get to see them do that same thing. And there's two guys that have really um, allowed that to happen. I've been able to meet up with people, uh, and that's been great. But the two, there's two guys, Austin Ortiz and Kenny Hernandez, who I really had a great opportunity to meet up with them on a consistent weekly basis at times and allowed God to use me to pour into their lives. And to see that, man, that has been an incredible experience to see that real life, not because I'm special, but I was available and God said, do this. And, you know, I see that that's what changed my life. And then I see that when I can be relational with people like that, mm -hmm. then, you know, if we're just talking ministry here, it's not about getting people to do things for you. But I find that when you can be one-on-one -on -one and show people, I really care about you. I don't need you to do this, this, and this for me. I actually care about you. And even if you don't ever do a thing for me, I'm here to pour into your life. I find then that's what the foundation has been built because those are the people that want to help build this platform. Those are the people that believe in this ministry, the people that I've taken that time with. Mm -hmm. And it's not that I do this so they do it. I want to do it because I love them where they are because that's how Jesus loved me where I was. And then I find that if it's the foundation is this relationship with people, you know, because that's what ministry is, you know. Absolutely. Your relationship with God, being a Christian, is a relationship with God. Ministry is your relationship with people. And if I foundationalize the ministry, meeting up intimately, talking one-on-one -on -one with people, with no camera, with nobody looking around, just not for me to look good, but me for to actually love them, I find that that's where it all starts. Yeah, I believe, um, I don't know, I, I kind of, because I'm very new to, you know, being Christian and, and, you know, new to God and all that stuff, but, like, it feels to me, I'm like this network guy, and, like, <laughs> when you're in a room with, people who know Jesus, like there's like this network cable that just is like connected. It's like this mesh network cable that's connected between every person that like knows Jesus. Right. And like there's that power that it's like supernatural Absolutely. that it can bounce back and forth between the people and just create conversations and relationships that God wants to happen because he creates that through that network. Absolutely. And like, even like if you're just walking by, I don't know, a hallway or something and someone is Christian, like that network cable just ding and like you something feel can you feel grow. It. It's just, it's supernatural and incredible when it happens. And it, there's no, there's no way to explain it. I just call it a network cable. No, I, I, I completely <laughs> understand what you're saying. I, I, I get where you're coming from, man. I definitely... <laughs> I get where you're coming from. I, and, I get that. Yeah, that's that's super powerful. Super, super powerful. So, um, going back to your your followers, um, do you have any form of automation, or have you ever used any form of automation, or, or um, any kind of tool or app to help you with what you do? With your followers or with, you know, uh, even scheduling things? Um, no, I, I, for the most part, uh, what I will do is I will try to, um, 
uh, two areas because uh, this is a ministry for people on the inside and the outside. So I will try to follow people from that 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 like post from nightclubs, and I will try to follow people that like post from churches, um, because we want to lead in both areas. Because mm -hmm. uh, I believe there's lost on the inside and lost on the outside, and Lord knows I've been both. And you do it manually. I do it manually. Um, so you know, do you have like a schedule, 20 a day, 100 a day? Uh, my goal is to try to get 100 followers a day, um, you know, if I'm having a good week. Uh, and then if not, then my goal is 50 a day uh, so to the game at, you know. And it's uh, all manual. It's just, all manual. You just do it for fun. Uh, uh, I don't know, fun. <laughs> like you uh, said, they're eating dinner, you just do it. Yeah, yeah. While you're eating lunch, just, yeah, just, just, just follow I, some people. Just try to follow some people, get them to follow back, and, uh, you know. And that's uh, that's kind of how it works. It's not it, it's a lot of hard work, uh, but I think that using the automation, uh, you know, I, I want to get the quality. And you know, I think that I found in trying to use the automation that that kind of gets lost because you start to you can get followers, you know, when I, I don't know because I, I want to get the people that are actually engaging in the post. Mm -hmm. And not just follow people that are following a church, and not just follow the people that are following, um, you know, a nightclub page. But I want actually. So get... you actually like look at the people, you look at what they're doing, yeah. You see if they're engaging, you see if they're intelligent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just because I, you know, we want everybody to do it, but I also believe that this is first and foremost going to start with the engaging people. We're going to build this from from that, and that's. That's how we start, and then the people that are sharing it and liking it and reposting it, the that's right now in essence. I'm still we're still building the ministry, and we're still trying to find the people that are going to help build it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's that's what that is. Uh, we want the people that are not engaging as well. We want everybody to know mm -hmm. Jesus. But in this beginning, to create that. to create that, I believe that's how you get a very high quality, mm -hmm. and you're getting the people that are a part of. You share a post of a Christian, like you're doing ministry. As far as I'm concerned, now maybe that wasn't the most difficult thing. Maybe that wasn't, but. You have still you put the word are. of God mm -hmm. out there. You yeah, know what I mean? Absolutely. You're still doing... You took an action. You, took your, you did your part. Absolutely. Right? And, you know, I always believe that we're going to do better and, and more and more. You know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, that's that's how I believe that we foundationally have created that following. And then, you know, the people that are liking and sharing, they're also, you know, probably a little bit more passionate about what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And they're probably going to talk to people and then revert right. people. Like, right. And that's how this mm -hmm. all... You know, that's how I believe that's a really great way to build that following. On do you media. pray before you do the following and like pray for people to, you know, um, find? You know, I, I, yeah, I mean, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But I, I always lift up the ministry um, to God. And I just want him to know that, you know, um, to keep my heart in this place where this isn't for me to get a big following, for me to be cool, for me. Like, I, I want to make sure that this is actually reaching people and that it's the heart of God that's felt, understood, experienced, and it transpires into faith for these people. So, you know, that's, uh, that's kind of where that, that is. So, um, <clears throat> are you the only one that does it, or do you have a team that, that help you do it, or do um, you kind of take turns doing it? For, for Instagram, I've mostly done that on my own. It's not that they didn't want to help. There's other people that did help. It was just... It's just easier with one person. Um, therefore, you can follow the people. Like you don't want to bother people too much. You don't want to keep trying to follow people. You know what I mean? You know what you know more or less market you've already reached. You know, it's just it gets a little difficult when it's like, oh, I've already reached out to this church. I've reached out to people in this nightclub online and stuff like that. And when you have too many people doing that, like then you're gonna have you know. One person that's, you know, reached this one and then the other person, you know, tries to, you know what I mean? It just gets a little confusing. So it wasn't necessarily that um, they weren't helping uh, or they didn't want to because they did offer and there's people on a team. But that I found was best to just kind of have one person handle that uh, because it's very difficult to express. So every... are you the only one? Um, when it came to Instagram, yes, Facebook is a little bit different the way you build the following. What we've done with Facebook was, uh, we created the church in the wild, uh, public figure page, the like button page. 
and I added people personally. On made my, some admins? Yeah, yeah, and then I made some admins, and then we f added more people on our personal page from the local areas, and then invited them to like the, the Church in the Wild page. So, um, yes, we had other people help in that regard, where we built up our own personal Facebook following, and then we invited all our personal Facebook friends to like the Church in the Wild page. So Facebook's a little bit easier um, when you create admins and stuff like that to, to, to point more people, to drive more people to a specific page. And that's kind of how we've worked um, with Facebook. Instagram. So with Instagram, you've pretty much been the guy doing yes. 100 a day to 50 a day type of thing for yeah, yeah. years. How many years? Oh, one year. One year. Yeah, okay. one, one year. year. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I, and you, when I when I I met you at Christ Fellowship, you had like a goal in mind. Like you were at like what was it like two thousand or something? Yeah. Um, we were. There was a goal for the Church in the Wild, uh, a, a Facebook page to hit ten thousand. Ten thousand. And we are now at eleven thousand. And I believe that the Church in the Wild page has kind of reached that organic place where we've gotten our quality followers and people are sharing it and tagging people in it to see it and, and it's growing in that way mm -hmm. um right now currently i'm building you know and, and i believe that this um this stage in my life like um my job is to be a ministry planter mm -hmm. i believe that's what it is and i believe that you know right now i've planted the church in the wild ministry and there's leaders that are going to take it over um and lead well and i really believe that's what god's calling it to be um, and now I'm doing that with my personal page and I'm realizing that that's something that's important too. So now I can go from city to city and, you know, already have that following. And even though I'm going to a different city, I can reach out to churches and nightclubs, um, and all the entertainment in that area and follow them because I'm going there, mm -hmm. and now we're going to plant a new ministry there, and we'll do the same thing, make another Instagram page for that community and build it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so right now, I actually do believe that the Church in the Wild uh, pages on Facebook and Instagram have kind of reached this place where people are sharing it, and they're loving it. And, and I'm learning more and more as I go along, you know, on how it works and what's the best way to do it, and it's a trial and error thing, and obviously inviting the presence of God to guide us and everything um you know so yeah that's just kind of how it's worked very very exciting to understand the ins and outs of creating you know 30,000 followers and different ways and, and how you you know look at quality versus you know quantity and don't use automation that's that's amazing very very cool to be inside the head and and they, and they hear it here you know the truth and stuff so um when we talked about what's next and what your vision is um where did the book come from the book uh it was just an idea that god just put on my heart for the book um i didn't think that i was ever going to be an author like i'm just going to remember like i was in you know we got a blower here now i don't want to they're doing a great job in my community making it look beautiful but uh we don't want to affect the sound too much. Uh, he's gone. We love him. Um, the book was an idea. Like I, I, I really wasn't good at writing in school. Like I hated writing. FCAT writes. Anybody who's an FCAT writes byproduct or child that had to go through that or is going to go through that, I will just tell you that was like um, anybody who's not in Florida. That's a writing test that we have to take. Uh, to even graduate high school. And if we don't pass that, you're gonna have A's and everything else, but if you don't pass the FCAT rights, you are not getting a diploma. Hmm. So it's a very strict thing, a lot of pressure, and I failed the FCAT rights every year before that, but there's this one in 10th grade that if you don't pass, you're gonna take it again in 11th grade and again in 12th grade, and if you don't pass it in 12th grade, you're gonna have to come back and take that after you finished all your classes to get the diploma. Wow. Uh, and I had never passed the FCAT rights. And wow. then that year, I remember putting a lot of emphasis in trying to make a good writing story for this test. And I barely passed that. What did you write about? Oh, I forget. That was 10, 11 years ago. But I remember barely even making it through. So I say all this to say that writing wasn't a stronghold for me. 
uh, just was not something I like to do. It was not very good at it at all, by the way. I passed one of these tests, and it was barely, and there was a lot of motivation uh, to do that. Um, so I just never thought I was going to be a book author. You know, I thought, you know, I can write messages, but, you know, you write a message, um, it's a lot of just points, you know what I mean? You don't really write, you're not really writing, you're writing down little ideas and little points to talk about those ideas, but for the most part, you're letting it flow and you're just taking this idea and you're praying on it. It's not actually writing. Um, you know, a spoken word, that's usually about a minute worth of words to say. Now, you are physically writing that out, but that's not very much. You know, you could read through a spoken word in 30 seconds or a minute if you wanted to. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't, it's not a whole lot. Now, a book, you know, I didn't ever think I was going to even write something that was a blog. Never mind an actual <laughs> book with chapters and, you know, be able to tell a story in any way. Um, you know... Now, God did put it on my heart to write this book that it would be a smaller book. And I was like, okay, well, maybe we can work with it. You know, I, it made me a little bit more open to it. And, you know, I was praying about it. I was actually a little insecure about writing the smaller book because I wanted to write a book like most people write a book. And God put it on my heart, hey, you're going to write this book um, smaller because your generation, younger people, don't take the time to do anything. They hardly want to watch a five-minute video. That's too much, you know what I mean? One minute they don't want to watch. I mean, you got to hit them with your points. The shorter, the better, usually, you know? Mm -hmm. If you can make a 25-second video and get your points across, that's kind of golden, you know? And, mm -hmm. you know, a book, if you can make it, you know, pretty small. You're 20 gonna, pages. If you, can make it, if you can get all your points in there, then <laughs> that's great. And God really spoke to me, and I was like, well, I don't know. Can I fit all that in this? And I just remember praying about it, mm -hmm. and... God was like, you're going to be an author. And I was like, wow, I never thought of myself as an author. And How old were you? Uh, I was 25 when I started the first book. So uh, needless to say, it was probably 10 years since I was ever forced to actually write anything out and had not written anything of you know decent proportion. Little you know sermons, obviously, which is I've explained is not a whole lot of writing. Mm -hmm. It's... And it's a lot of writing. It's not organized writing. It's a lot of points here and there and references that make sense to you, the preacher. But if you were to hand it to someone else, they might be a little lost. Yeah. Uh, so it is a yeah. lot of writing, but it's a lot of... It's, it's like, like notes here and there. Right, like, right. Um, it's not necessarily thoughts. something that you could give to somebody and say, hey, you know, like, like this is your... Read this. Check this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah I don't yeah, even yeah, understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, all that to say, that's where the book came from, and it was a heart of God, and I remember writing it, um, and that was just something that I just felt the Holy Spirit moving through. And How I just, long did it take? It took a couple months, a couple months to, to, to get the raw. Did you do it, like, every day or once a week? Uh, I, did, or... I, I probably <laughs> spent about, let's say, three or four hours a week writing it. Hmm. You know, some days maybe I just took a whole day and spent four hours, or maybe I took an hour a day. Was it something you told yourself you wanted to do and you had to do or something that the, the feeling would hit you, I think I need to go right? Um, I would usually make time for it. Um, I'd usually make time for it. I'd usually go to a library. There's a library um, actually down in the Fort Lauderdale area, the Nova College Library, which is actually a public library as well. And I don't know, for me, that was a very good place to write that book. It's very quiet. Um, you know, it's this environment with books and words, and I don't know, whatever. Like, Inspirational. That, that was just, just being in there helped me write the book. I don't know if that relates to anybody. Um, I usually cool. didn't write most of that book at home. Um, but, like, I don't know. There's something about being in a library uh, and writing the books. And I was, like, just, like.